Hi there folks, my name is Novawing24 and welcome to another little Microsoft Flight Simulator aircraft review. And today this is a review that has a lot of significance for me and I am really, really excited to bring this one to you today. So today we are having a look at the recently released rendition of the Pilatus PC21 turboprop trainer from Iris Simulations. Uh, so before we get too far into it, I do want to say a huge shout out and a huge thank you to the team over at RS Simulations for providing the review copy of this aircraft today. Uh, and we're going to be going through this review in our, pretty much our standard format. We're going to go through and have a look at our exterior here, go through the cold and dark startup of the aircraft, put the aircraft through its paces, uh, and uh, along the way show off some of its quirks, foibles, and some of the cool stuff, the just absolutely cool stuff about this aircraft. And I'm not going to lie, I am grinning like an absolute idiot here uh, because this aircraft for me is incredibly important because this is an aircraft and it's a, it's a really significant uh, add-on review for me because this is an aircraft that I have actual stick time in. So for me, I actually have uh, time um, in the, as pilot in command of a PC-21. So for me, I am super excited to see what the team over at Iris have done done for us. Now, uh, all right, so the other thing I should probably also allude to as well is that the, and, and again, a full disclosure here, now normally my reviews are very, very uh, clear about, you know, I do them uh, exactly as they come out of the box when you purchase it. Uh, I have made a slight exception for this one today because uh, uh, the, the livery that we are looking at here is a livery that is available for free. It's available, it was actually developed, uh, so the uh, the manuals and much of the paperwork and uh, this uh, this development by our simulations was done in conjunction with uh, the RWF virtual uh, community. Uh, RWFV were all, uh, able to assist with part of the documentation writing. And uh, along with that, they also released uh, a livery pack for Royal Australian Air Force PC-21s, as uh, the Royal Australian Air Force does fly the PC-21 in the training and support roles. And this particular livery was one of a uh, was as part of the free livery pack that that uh, community has released to, and made available to everybody. It was uh, produced in conjunction, uh, produced by that talented community, and. The reason why I'm flying this aircraft is because, as I said, not only do I have stick time in a PC-21, it is actually in this airframe. So, yeah, when when I saw that this livery was available uh, as part of this pack uh, and uh, knowing that RAF-V had a huge and instrumental role in uh, producing this aircraft and bringing this aircraft to life in the sim, uh, I absolutely had to fly it. So, yeah, just wanted to say that one. Uh, but, you know, as, I said, as we sort of get on here, the textures, uh, the aircraft does come with... Uh, significant number of amazing high quality textures uh, included out of the box uh, including a number of uh, sort of, you know, like uh, Pilatus house colours uh, along with a number of other foreign operators as well as a number of really cool exciting fictional schemes but as I said this one is one that I wanted to cover off Anyway, all right, okay, on to our model look. Now as we've been uh, going through and having a look at the exterior here, it is absolutely a PC-21, and the level of detail uh, of uh, of this PC-21 developed by Iris Simulations is really, really outstanding. Like, you know, all the little features of the aircraft, you know, right down to the pins, the locks, uh, and all the latches and switches are all modelled in beautiful detail, uh, even including these little RBF tags and all the sort of associated ground equipment for the aircraft are also done in beautiful detail. Like, I absolutely... Love how this is done. You know, the, the leading edge notches uh, on the front of the wings. You know, we've got the uh, external fuel tanks capable as well. And probably something to, to really point out with these is that this aircraft, uh, and, uh, it does support by default out of the box that these reds and other associated materials, they all are bound to various states of the aircraft. So they will actually only appear if you don't have your pilot weights uh, actually set uh, and the engine is shut down before the reds uh, will appear by default. Now, you can override that. You can click a couple of buttons in the cockpit, which we'll get to a little bit later on uh, to show that. But as I said, like, the, the level of detail here is just so good. And I'm just 
loving you know all the rivet lines coming through here the quality of the textures are said are just outstanding and uh, all the way down to I mean, a bit of self-promotion there but you know the external generator cart as well the external ground power all of this stuff is just modeled in beautiful detail that i just it it just brings me straight back as i said i i remember climbing aboard this aircraft and going yep this and and when i first saw it in the sim i was like this is amazing now, the team at Iris Simulations, of course, uh, is no stranger to the PC-21, having produced a rendition of this aircraft for FSX back in the day. But th I want to point out that this is not just a straight port over of their FSX model. In, in no way, shape or form should you consider that. They've taken their experience that they've had producing this aircraft previously along with working uh, with Pilatus, and actually uh, this is a, uh, a license, they are actually are, uh, are able to bring this to the sim through a license with Pilatus uh, to recreate it in some pretty cool and amazing detail. So, uh, they, as I said, they, you can definitely show the, the pedigree that this, uh, uh, that this developer has uh, by bringing it to life and uh, bringing it to life in this special way. It is just, uh, just as I said, it just... As I said, you can probably hear through the through the audio. Just I am grinning because this is just a great a lot of memories coming through here, and it is great to see the team develop this aircraft. Uh, all right, so now that we've had a look at this amazing high quality external model, let's jump now into the office and get ourselves underway to get ourselves started and into the air. All right, so here we are in the office of the PC-21. And again, the team at Iris Simulations, their sort of you know, attention to detail and the modeling really, really shines through here with a lot of detail here in the cockpit. And the cockpit is you know, dominated by these three multifunction displays in the center here, along with the UFCP. So there aren't uh, any analog gauges. The only analog gauges are your sort of fallback compass and clock, but everything else is uh, our, our digital gauges here. So they have all been modeled in some pretty cool detail and we've uh, got the, some pretty good functionality included with this one as well. And again, just looking around the cockpit here, like this is uh, a lot of memories for me coming through here going, yep, this is what the aircraft was like when I flew it. So... Yes, I, I can 100% say that, yeah, this is just like the real thing. So I can 100% back that one. All right. Now, uh, something I want to talk about before we go through our startup process here is that it's actually really, really important to follow your startup checklist. Now, the reason for that is that the team at Iris have done a great deal of work with modeling a lot of the aircraft systems, as many as they are uh, able to under their license from Pilatus. Uh, and as such, the custom coding that goes behind that means that if you don't follow your startup checklist pretty much to the letter, then your aircraft is going to behave in some rather unusual fashion. So uh, part of this review is also going to be help you through your, you know, as I said, basically follow your checklist, but, you know, to give, you, uh, give everybody a bit of a helping hand as we go through that one. So I do want to walk everybody through that. Now, uh, one other thing that I did want to quickly show off here as well is that we saw when we were doing our external uh, look around, we saw our external fuel tanks there. Now, those are dynamic based on fuel weight. So I'm just going to bring up our weight and balance because I'm actually going to remove those external fuel tanks because I want to replace them with the smoke generators, which is uh, so we can show those off in operation later in the video. So as far as the external tanks here, uh, while you have fuel in the external tanks, then they will appear. But if you remove the fuel from your external tanks, then they will disappear. So as we can see, you have a case in point there. Uh, the other part that's also dynamic as well is part of the pilot and co-pilot, uh, you know, sort of, you know uh, trainee pilot and instructor pilot weights here. So that if you don't have those uh, weights filled, then you don't have the pilot characters on. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our pilot characters in here. So we're going to put our uh, 170 pounds for our, oops, not 1,700 pounds. There we go. That's the one we want. 170 pounds. There we go. So we'll put that there. Now, if we jump to the outside view... We can see that our budding trainee pilot at the front there and our wise instructor pilot at the rear have all have now both now appeared in the aircraft. So that's again part of the dynamic system that's set up for the aircraft. You'll also notice as well that you'll notice that the reds have all disappeared now that we have crew on board. So again, it's part of that dynamic setup and dynamic system uh, for the aircraft. So yeah, the chocks are still there because we've um, got the aircraft, the engines shut down. But because now we've got crew on board, uh, we've obviously done our pre-flight checks and we've removed all our remove before flight tags. So 
It's a small little thing, but again, it's something that I really appreciate from the team at Iris putting that little bit of little bit of extra effort in that one to do that. All right, back to starting the aircraft. All right, so now let's bring, as I said, as part of us starting our aircraft, let's bring up our checklist here. So we'll bring up our inner sim checklist. We can go through all these to actually check it. Now, these uh, in sim checklists are derived from real world checklists for the PC21. Uh, so it is uh, important to actually sort of go through and actually check all of this stuff as you go along because it will make sure that everything works. As I said before, it will make sure that the rest of your aircraft experience will be what you expect and not do weird things. So we are going to go through it. Uh, there are a couple of pieces, uh, parts here that need a, might need a bit of explanation and I'll cover those off as we get to them. All right, so first thing to do, fuel and weight. We've checked those items off already, so we can tick those. Okay, that's great. Okay, parking brake applied is set and checked. Battery masters one and two on. Okay, so let's power both the batteries on. There we go. And we've got our master uh, caution coming on there. We just acknowledge that. There we go. All right, now we're just going to turn our generators on. So you turn the generators on before start, actually, which is a bit unusual, actually, for some aircraft, but important to remember for this aircraft. All right, we do have our external power connected, which is uh, which we've got done there. There we go. So that's all set. All right, now flight controls, check free and full movement. So let's uh, do our flight control check here. So we'll do our stick here. Full movement, rudder pedals are moving. Now let's check it on the aircraft. So we can see wingtip, aileron up, and spoilerons, which is actually also important as well. Because uh, that's one of the things about this aircraft is it has an incredibly high roll rate, uh, which is due in part to those little uh, spoilerons or sort of, you know, spoiler ailerons there as well. So we can see our rudder checking there, and we've got our elevators are all checked. All right, so we can mark that uh, checked as complete. All right, internal lights are not required uh, for today because we are on, uh, whoop, we are on doing daylight flight today. All right, oxygen is set to off. Check PCL. Check full full movement. So we're going to move that off uh, uh, fuel. So we're going to check our full movement. Check and then check back to fuel off. So this is important for starting. By the way, you'll uh, you have to uh, know this for when you do the startup process and also when you shut the engine down. You do have this little uh, fuel off switch uh, for uh, paddle just in the front of the PCL or the throttle. So we've got uh, that there. Okay, now flaps lever is set to up. Check fire test one and two. Let's just go. Fire test one, all indicators set, acknowledge, then we'll do fire test two, all indicators correct, there we go, and acknowledge, to acknowledge those down, all right, lamp test, so press and hold, and we can see all our lights illuminating as expected, good. And that is done. All right, power management system is checked and guarded. Now, I just remember where my PMS is. There it is. So that is dark and guarded. Done. Anti-skid is set to on. Check. Auto start closed and guarded. Check starter ignition set to auto. Check. Fuel pumps set to... Fuel pump set to auto, check. Emergency jettison closed and guarded, check. External fuel pump set to auto, though we don't have external fuel tanks today. TAD is on. So this is your trim aid here. If it is dark, if it's uh, not illuminated, then it is on. And trim aileron power set to on, check. Trim indicator function set green. All right, so let's uh, go through and check our pitch trim. Both correct and reset to green. All right, aileron trim. Seeing the movement. And then back to green. Set and rudder trim. Set and back to green. Set. Okay, function trim indicator function set 
Landing gear down, three greens, check. Emergency landing gear in, check. Arm switch is set to off, check. All right, so these next ones, uh, these next parts of the checklist. So in the real world aircraft, you actually check each of these panels and uh, and displays of the aircraft. With the, when it says condition, you're basically checking to make sure the condition there's no scratches or there's no cracks in the screen that would prevent you being able to read the displays as required. So uh, as we're in a simulator, we know that they are all good, so we can tick all of those items and close them off. That is all done. All right, FMS set to on. So we turn our FMS on. Now, quick word on the FMS. So the PC-21 does have a FMS uh, in the real-world aircraft. Now, for various reasons, um, our simulations have not been able to do a full 100% replication of the FMS that the PC-21 has. Instead, what they provided, they've, they've provided us with a fully functional FMS based on the default Sobo FMS. So it still achieves the same goal and the same end state for our simulator experience. Um, it's just that it is based on the in the native in-sim FMS rather than a custom-coded one for this aircraft. Now, I know some people might, might want to say that, oh, that's not right and stuff like that. It's like that's a lot of it's... I, I'm going to take a stab in the dark. I don't know for sure, but I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say that most likely that's to do with licensing. And at the end of the day... It's not a huge issue. I don't. I really don't think it is. So it, for me, it doesn't break my version because, quite honestly, I'm not going to be flying using the SMS, uh, the using the FMS. Instead, I'm going to be using uh, either. I'm just going to be doing VFR flying and flying on and doing my doing custom flying on uh, as I go. Or alternatively, I'm going to have planned my flight in the pre-flight uh, screen and loaded a flight plan in that way, which comes up and essentially is uses the mission computer uh, input for this aircraft. So uh, we're going to mark that one as on. So as long as everybody does know that, that's fine. Okay, awesome. All right, we're gonna, just going to go back to index. We're just going to leave that there, I think, because we're not really going to be using that today. We're not going to be using that today. So all right, FMS on intake, prop probes, de-icing are all set to off, check. External lights, nav lights on, Check. FMS set as required. As I said, we are not using that today, so that's fine. Push the talk is set to centre. Check. AMU norm. Check. ECS temp as required. My uh, office is nice and cool, so everything is fine. VCS is closed and guarded. Check. Fan speed set to auto. And cabin pressure set to norm. Okay, page complete. Okay, awesome. All right, now, before we move on to the engine start, I do want to quickly show something on the setup here before we get uh, to the actual start of the aircraft. So on your main panel here, most of the time we'll be using the systems page, especially during the startup. But if you use the uh, instrumentation page here, this is where uh, Iris Simulations has hidden a lot of the, some of the, changeable functions of the aircraft so you can actually decide whether or not you know when you connect your ground power unit this is how you connect it here this is also where you control your uh external smoke generators so for us they that also they can only be fitted if you don't have the external fuel tanks on so that's why i took the fuel tanks off before so we're going to change these to be fitted so we do have both of the smoke generators now fitted and if we have a look outside the window here we can see that they are fitted there they are under the wing all right, you can also go through and preset your lights for the aircraft. So you can get pre preset it for daytime, dawn, dusk operations, or night operations. We'll have a look, bit look at the night lighting a little bit later on. Now, this one here, the cockpit front. So you can actually switch between, because both cockpits are modeled, both front and rear cockpit are modeled, though you can only solo this aircraft from the front seat. Uh, but the uh, this what this button controls, what this part of the panel controls, is whether or not or how you see the screens. So if you change, if I was to change this to back, then these screens would all go dark here in the front cockpit, and they would all now be powered on at the rear cockpit. Uh, obviously, I was uh, going to be flying from the front here today, so I'm not going to do that. But if you do want to do rear rear seat operations, you can do those. And hopefully, when we start getting shared cockpit, um, that might be helpful for everybody. Uh, all right, so beyond that, uh, so multiplayer and so sort of solo versions of the aircraft. Uh, I'll be honest, not 100% sure what that does, but it's there for a reason. Now, probably the most important one on here is your HUD. Now, the the aircraft, the, the, this rendition of the PC-21 supports 
the uh, an actual uh, HUD display built uh, built and designed and based off the actual PC21's HUD. However, for those using D- DX12 and certain anti- anti-aliasing settings, um, you may experience screen tearing with it or issues with the displaying uh, not cor- you know, not displaying correctly. So as a result, as a backup, the team at, at Iris have uh, implemented the ability for you to switch between a sort of generic uh, FA FA18 HUD, which is you know, utilized in the uh, Super Hornet that ships from Asobo, or alternatively, you can use a more accurate actual PC21 HUD. Now, I the settings that I run means that I, I don't have any issues with the uh, with the HUD displaying in this way, so I'm going to leave it set to PC21 HUD because that is the HUD that I am literally familiar with, and I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, but that is just something for you to be aware. Uh, probably more important for uh, Xbox users, uh, but also for PC users who are using certain anti-aliasing settings. This is what you're going to do to uh, how to avoid that screen tearing. Now, the developer has already said that they will be uh, updating the PC21 uh, HUD version to support the the new anti-aliasing and new coding settings. Uh, but it is a work in progress and not available at this at the time of making this video. But it is coming in the future. All right, uh, that's pretty much it. Otherwise, this one, you can get the AI to actually go through and auto start the aircraft, prepare the aircraft for taxi, prepare the aircraft for takeoff, or shut the aircraft down. You can do that if you don't want to follow the checklist yourself. So as I said, follow the checklist if you want to do a manual start. Otherwise, if you just want a quick start, start the runway or use one of these buttons to get to go through all the systems set up to make sure the aircraft is working as advertised. All right, so we're going on to the next page here. Uh, so this is where we go through. We saw our settings before with things like the chocks, the the reds all coming on, uh, coming on and disappearing with certain conditions of the aircraft. Uh, this is where you can control them, so you can set them manually if you so desire. Same with the aircrew appearing by weight. Now, oxy pins. Now that's set to norm. So that is will come into play a little bit further into the checklist here. But your option is you can either norm, norm, uh, you can either have it as norm, or you can have it as inhibit. Um, I'm going to leave it set to norm uh, because I want to show you one of the gotchas that can sometimes happen for new users of this aircraft. But so we'll leave that for now. All right, that goes through that page. That's covered there. So I want to cover that off. That's a really important page. Essentially, it's that um, tablet EFB that many aircraft that should have shipped with for the sim now. This sort of replaces that and puts it in a kind of a more appropriate setting. But for now, let's go back to our systems page with our warning lights there. Okay, so let's see we go. All right, back to our checklist now. All right, so as I said, we've uh, picked up, yeah, pre, we finished off our before engine start checklist, so we're now onto our engine start checklist. Now, I like this first one, HMD VR fitted and secure, so it's a nice little nod to uh, us uh, simulated users, so uh, we can check that one as done. All right, CFS pin. Now, this is really important. So, uh, this little, uh, this these squiggly lines here, for those who don't know it, this is what's called a canopy fracture system. Uh, basically, if you ever need to eject out of the aircraft or if you need to blow the canopy for whatever reason, then you uh, pull, a, uh, pull, a, uh, pull the CFS, uh, which is triggered automatically with ejection, but if you are uh, if you need to blow the canopy for whatever reason, you trigger it manually. Uh, and it explodes all the deck cord that's in here and blows the canopy away. Now, of course, that system uh, is you know explosive, so it has to be armed, and in the ground, you keep it disarmed, and that's uh, done through this um, firing pin here. So this is currently in a safe mode. Now, in order for you to be able to close close the canopy, you actually need to say you need to arm the canopy fracture system. So we're going to uh, arm that now, and that's little, little cute little inner animation there to actually put that into the combing. So that is fine and is exactly where it's supposed to be. All right, that now means that we've armed our CFS pin, and we can now close and lock the canopy. So let's uh, close that one there, and we can now lock the canopy in place done okay now we're going to ready f- further onto our starting so we're going to put our red anti-collision lights are now on okay so let's check our oil temperature okay so oil temperature i've got to remember where that is now on this page okay engine temperature is 15 degrees or engine temp- uh, oil temperature 15 degrees within norms operate there i think that should be less than 40 degrees celsius i think that should be so, minor typo there. Anyway, all right, 
back onto I believe our actually I believe our engine page for our startup here. So that's actually the one that we'll need. That's I'm just remembering my training now. Okay, so we tick that item. Now it's on to engine auto start. So we press our engine. So we open up the cover and then we press auto start. All right, now we have to watch our NG, waiting for it to hit about 12% where we move the PCL forward. Don't let it get to 15%. Seventeen percent. Okay, twelve percent. Idle. There we go. Caught it before seventeen percent. We are good. Okay. Engine oil pressure is increasing. NG rising. ITT rising. PCL is sitting at idle. All right, we're going to pump our tow brakes. All right, engine. Stabilizing at 54% NG. All right, so 50% minimum NG, check. Okay, engine and oil pressures are in the green. So we are good there. Okay, propeller above 600 RPM. We are good. Everything is looking fine here. Okay, all right, so we are set there. Okay, gen and one and two check volts. So onto our electric page. Generator one and two volts are good. Battery is charging, check, okay. If we go to here, disconnect our GPU. I go to our systems page now. Okay, MC HUD switch. So this is down here. So this is our mission, mission MC for mission computer and HUD. So we're going to push that forward to MC HUD. Now it does take up to sort of like a minute or so for the uh, your PFD and your left MFD and your HUD to come on. So it actually gives you the uh, information there coming through on your UFCP as well. So while that's happening, we're going to check all our other things here. We're going to set our intake DI set to on for a bypass on. Okay, oxygen on and check flow. And this is one of the first gotchas here. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn our oxygen on here because we've got our warning here, warning about oxygen. Uh, now, but you notice that even though I've uh, clicked the oxygen on, I've still got the oxy warning on. Now that's because we have two crew in here at the moment. So you can see on here that I've got my oxygen status here. So I've got my white sort of light here coming on and off with my breathing. But if I, I've got nothing for my rear, my instructor. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump back into my instructor's station here. Uh, and again, you can see that, you know, all the screens are currently powered off, uh, even though they are functional. Now we have to turn their oxygen on. There we go. And we can now see the two white lights appearing. And if we go back now to, oh, wrong camera settings, close. That's the one I want. All right. Um, we can now see that that warning has now dis uh, disappeared. So, okay, so that's good. Now we can carry on with our checklist. Okay, so we've got our oxygen check. Yeah, next one is our flaps and air brake. Okay, so in, uh, the, in a real aircraft situation, you would normally have a ground crew operator, or sort of one of your ground crew, actually just off the front of the aircraft, who'd actually be monitoring this while you do it. But we can actually sort of uh, keep an eye on it through our hydraulics here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set our flat position to takeoff, first position. Now, I said normally I'd be watching a ground crewman and uh, to watch him actually uh, move his hands to show that he's seeing that move. And I can see it here on the hide page. I'm then going to go to landing flap. Again, just force a habit. I'm looking at my, uh, my front left there. All right, that's fully extended. I then return them back to takeoff position because I'm about to use them. All right, and once they're confirmed back in place, I now would extend my air brake in the same thing. And I'd look to see uh, the ground crew support, confirming that they can see the air brake extending as corrected. It also appears on both your SFD and on your PFD as well. And then we're gonna tuck that one back in and we can mark that as checked on our checklist. All right, done. UFCP setup as required. So as I said before, this is our upfront control panel. 
So you could do a lot, essentially a lot of your basic commands that you might be used to on say on Garmin's or whatever you can do through here, including doing things like nav frequencies, uh, com frequencies, uh, setting different modes. Uh, you can all choose those through here. Um, Quick words on a couple of things on here. Okay, so you do have some studs actually pre-programmed. Uh, so you can, for example, uh, choose a stud, we'll choose a stud five, enter. Okay, and it will put that there. Now, the studs here that are pro, there are studs programmed, frequency programmed in here, but they are not gonna helpful unless you're in a very specific set of airspace. So, I'm going to be very careful about how I phrase this. So you are able to change the frequencies in your comm studs if you want to. However, word of caution, the doing with doing that means you've got to mess with some of the panel files and the XML files of this aircraft. So sorry, Xbox users, you guys can't do it. Uh, but for PC users, you can. Uh, however, the, uh, the the team at Iris Simulations are going to be producing a how-to video on how to actually do that. But in the meantime, if you want to experiment yourself, please, for the love of all things, uh, aviation, make some backups before you start messing with stuff. Uh, but just in case, uh, then, uh, but so if you want to give it a crack and give it a go yourself, you absolutely can. Otherwise, if you're looking at just simply, let me just quickly set that back again, back to Unicom. So if you want to actually set your frequency, which is what most of us are going to do, you can actually just do that by pressing frequency and then dialing in the frequency. Now, something that's, again, a bit of a gotcha with the PC-21 in real life as well, is that the frequencies, well, we'll just set that now. So let's go frequency here. And let's, let's set that to the uh, ATIS here at uh, or nearby at West Sale. So if we go to, so that's one, two, five, decimal four. So we go one, two, five, decimal four. Okay. Now, if I try and hit the, the uh, end of the frequency there, it shows up as error because the PC-21, a little bit of a quirk, uh, it, you actually have to enter all three decimal places. So to do that, so we go one, two, four, sorry, uh, clear, one, two, five, decimal four, zero, zero. You actually have to set all of them and have it flashing back at you before you hit enter, and then it will actually come up. So that's just a word of warning to be able to do that, is that I would just 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 remember that, okay? Just just remember it. Just remember it. That's all I'm gonna say. Alright, so let's go here, let's go back to start one. Enter done. So back to Unicorn, we don't need that at the moment. So just Something important for you to guys to know, if you're wondering, if you're having trouble setting up your comm frequencies, that may be what's happening. Now, similarly, uh, we're going to set up our nav frequencies as well, so much, much the same way. So we're going to go over to our ILS. Uh, so we're going to set our, uh, see ILS, ILS enables your nav frequencies, so you can actually tune your nav radios. I'm going to be tuning in because uh, we're going to be doing a missed approach uh, practice later on in this review flight. So I'm going to set my ILS here at a sale. So we're going to go one, so we're going to go oh, frequency one zero nine decimal five zero zero. Wait for it's flashing at me and go enter. All right, there we go. So that's all done and it even shows up with the identifier. So we are good to go there. This aircraft also does also support TACAN navigation as well. Uh, so uh, it's picked up the local um, uh, e sail TACAN of TACAN 32 X ray, uh, and that information is displayed uh, and available to you. All right, so that's it. Uh, that's pretty much it. You can also set your bingo, joker, and detotes uh, of your uh, fuel weight as required uh, you can set all that uh, if you need uh, as you need to so if you want to change from your uh, 450 or 350 pound joker and bingo settings you absolutely can change those all right that goes through setting up our ufcp we're going to go back to our com page now onwards on to our pfds and our mfds now let's start with the uh, the left MFD. So we've already gone through the right MFD. We know all what's happening with that one. So let's go now to the left MFD. So our left MFD is essentially your navigation uh, home. It's got all your navigation on there. Uh, most functionality is here, not all. Again, I'm guessing a lot of that's gonna to be to do with uh, proprietaries and licensing capabilities, but the important stuff is here. Now. The one thing I really want to show off here is, which is a really, really cool little feature of this one, um, is this. So, and again, I want to stress something about this. Okay, so the many, many military aircraft have the ability to, when they're preloading navigational data in for their uh, sortie, 
Um, they have the ability to, to actually load uh, section, sectional charts or uh, various maps into the uh, aircraft's memory system to display and display your position over the top of a usual sectional or navigational map chart that you need that you might be familiar with. Now, the team at Iris Simulations have included that capability inside the PC-21. However, they've only included um, map files for two locations, uh, so RAAF uh, East Sale and RAAF Pierce in Western Australia. They have said that they, again, they've said that they are going to be creating a user guide and like a how-to video on how to add your own maps in if you so desire. However, at the time, again, stressing here, at the time of making this video, they have not released that. They're not completed that and not released that at this time. So if you want to give it a crack yourself, good luck. Um, I would suggest wait for instructions uh, and the guidance availability, uh, but it is available to you. But as I said, like if you're flying around the East Sale or flying around uh, West Australia near Pierce, then you will have the treat of being able to see these charts available to you. Uh, otherwise, a lot of these functions are fairly limited at the moment because a lot of them are related to military functions that aren't necessarily public information so the limitations there are some limitations on what has been portrayed here but the important stuff of being able to sort of show the information on here set your ranges and show these charts as required uh, those are all available uh, I think that's pretty much I think although they power on there's not a lot actually that is as I said like most of these are non-functional but it is available to you uh, to, as I said it is still modelled and it does work under the hood even if we don't always get to see all of it okay all right, that's the left MFD down now on to the PFD so your P PFD so your basic six is all digital in the PC-21, uh, other than your sort of your backup instruments, um, sort of your, your, your backup uh, SFD here and your engine uh, and your EMD over on the right here. Uh, so we'll set these ones here. Now these buttons on the side here all do what they say on the tin. Uh, so for example, you can actually, with your bearing pointers, you can actually change uh, sort of, you know, what they do. So we've set, so uh, COM1 freak, so a, a NAV1 input source, uh, or BPI, a bearing pointer one source coming through uh, ILS. Uh, you can actually cycle through those and you set them, for example, set them to TACAN, um, you set them to Mission Computer, which is the same as the, if you pre-plan a flight and a flight path in the main, pre-flight window then this will appear as part of your mission computer FMS will be anything that you might program using the FMS down here uh, and then nothing displayed at all so we're going to leave this one set to TACAN we're going to have that one set to TACAN at the moment and we'll leave that one actually you know what I'm going to set this one actually I'm going to set this one to radio nav 1 and I'm set bearing pointer 2 to TACAN let's do that one there we go uh, and then you go through the different HSI modes so you can display the different HSI modes and cycle through them. So we've got those two there. We'll leave it set to that one at the moment. And then again, your nav and mission course uh, sort of controlling through here. So we'll set that all through. We'll leave that one set to uh, TACAN at the moment. All right, onto the right-hand side of uh, the display here. So this one here is your uh, multifunction knob. So essentially this will do whatever you uh, we'll do after you press a button over here. So for example, uh, if we want to change the barometer, uh, we test press the barrow and then we change the barometer there. So I'm going to change that back down to 1013 millibars because that's what we're running today, the weather today. Then, or for example, if we want to set our altitude, we set this one here. So I'm going to set up uh, about I set 6,000 feet because that'll be part of our little uh, display in a little bit later on in this video so let me set that now just a bit of a mouse wheel scroll 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 6,000 feet there we go done uh, and again if I want to set my decision height we'll leave that set 200 you just change the button stand through here your vertical speed is a bit of an odd one and probably one of the drawbacks of having the tooltips turned on is that if you uh, so vertical speed you select that one and that's your vertical speed um, sort of setting here so that's that little white triangle here so positive or negative uh, the problem is, is that while you're actually trying to adjust it you can't see where the knob is so that's a little like it's a small thing but it is a little bit of a it's a little bit of a frustrating thing there uh, you can change your range on your uh, navigational display there um, the arc mode is inoperative and not functional and your course and heading knobs down here do what they say in the tin. 
All right. Uh, last but not least down here, uh, you've got your uh, autopilot. So you do have a uh, functional autopilot in this system uh, with the panel down here for all of this setup. So we're going to leave our, turn our flight director on. There we go. Okay. Actually, you know what? I'm going to actually, no, you know what? I'm going to turn my flight direct off. I'm going to turn that on a little bit on once we're airborne. All right. That has gone through. We've now set up all our UFCP, our left MFD, and our PFD, and our right MFD, and our DWP. We can confirm we've got no red or amber captions selected or available or showing to us. All right. Now we are ready for ta taxi and before takeoff. All right. So we're going to turn our landing light on for our taxi. There we go. All right, next we're going to take our parking brake off. So we're going to depress the brake pedals. Parking brake is released. All right, and then we're going to check our brakes. So I'm going to brakes off and brakes checked. Okay, and we are good. Brakes are checked and working. All right, time for us to taxi. So let's uh, taxi out. I said uh, we're departing from uh, RWF East Sail today for this uh, demonstration uh, review flight. Uh, we're not using any scenery. This is just simply the default uh, sail of the ships with the sim, which is uh, unfortunately lacking. Uh, but I didn't. I haven't seen anybody with uh, any East Sail uh, scenery yet. So uh, hopefully someone might uh, bring some to life in the near future. All right. Now she is quite fast on the taxi so i've got the pcl at idle here um i remember the aircraft is uh, in real life from my time here she is somewhat quick on the taxi you don't have to ride the brakes but you do have to be conscious of her starting to run away a bit but i think that uh, from a previous review and from speaking with uh other members of the community that the taxi sort of the speed on the taxi is more of a simism uh, rather than an issue with individual add-ons, which is uh, a bit unfortunate. Hopefully, Asobo will uh, fix that at some point with the, the friction uh, when we're taxiing on the ground, especially with turboprops. But the uh, brakes are, are pretty effective and pretty spot on, I think, uh, for this one that the team at Iris Simulations have done. So uh, good job to them on that one. Just got to make sure I move my, uh, move my feet in... Uh, in, 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 in parallel because uh, differential braking is a thing. All right, so we're going to be taxiing down to the end and we're going to be departing on uh, 27 today. Got to be, even though it's a default, you know, sort of just, you know, default AI generated airport, it's still pretty good. I like the undulations uh, on the, uh, that they've actually set pretty well here. So that's, 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 that's definitely bringing back up a few memories. All right. We're coming up to our hold short point and we'll do our final lineup checks. Okay. Right up here. Okay, I'll hold short of 27. All right, now I'm going to put my parking brake on to help me for this one. All right, so open up the checklist here. All right, ejection seat, armed pins removed. Okay, so we're going to have to arm the seat here. So we've got to lean to my view around here. We arm the seat. Now, remember what we did, we had to do with our uh, instructor pilot at the back seat. Um, we have to do the same uh, again to be able to do that with their ejection seat. So let's go back and let's uh, arm their seat now. Turn that. Again, little animation there. Oh, there's no hole in the combing. Eh, it's a minor thing. It's a minor thing, but it's kind of noticeable. All right, back to the front there. Uh, and that, by the way, folks, uh, goes to what I was talking about before with the, um, if you have the uh, the oxy pin set to inhibit, then that will mean that you don't have to do that. Also, if you only have um, pilot weight in the front seat and not in the rear, then you won't have those uh, cautions go, to, go off because it, just like in the real aircraft, it detects weight in the uh, in the seat. So if there's weight in the seat, then it'll know that, hey, there's supposed to be oxygen and there's supposed to be you know, seat arming at the back there. But if there's nobody sitting back there, then the alarm won't go off, go off and you are all good to go. All right, let's go back to our systems page now. All right, continue on with our before takeoff checklist. Okay, ejection seat, arm, pins removed, check oxygen on and check flow checked. Air brake in, warnings out, check. Flaps set to takeoff, check trim aid on so it's because it's black or because it's unilluminated that means it's on trims are in the green check touch that 
slightly left wing down. All right, canopy closed and lock checked. Flight instruments are all synchronized. Check. All right, probes, heat, probes the icing on. Check captions. All right, so the only captions we've got on is got our bypass on. Probes are uh, and pops. Okay, we are good here. Flight controls, recheck full and free. Check. And done, complete. Okay, emergency departure brief uh, is completed. Well, we know that, well, hopefully we won't die. That's fine, that'll do. All right, line up. Uh, transponder mo on mode C. So transponder here, mode C, check. And uh, code two two four two four today. There we go. Done. We are set. All right. Transponder is set. Recognition lights are on. Recogs on. White anti coals are on. Check. Compasses cross checked. We are good to go. All right. So for our departure, uh, we're looking at 85 knots uh, for the rotate uh, and then cleaned up by 120 knots. That's our thing. All right. So let's go through here and check that out. All right. Parking brake is released. Okay. No warnings. Checked. A lot of memories coming flooding back as I'm uh, doing this taxi here. So as I said, having flown this aircraft, oh, that's a bit tight there on that turn. Uh, flown this aircraft out of here is, um, and doing it now in the sim is really, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a deal. It's a bit of a deal. Okay, light up and wait. Okay, checked, cross check, everything ready to go. All right, time for us to get into the skies. All right, throttling up, brakes off. A little bit of right rudder. Airspeed is alive. 85 knots. Pitch up. Gear up. Flaps up. And we're aiming for about 13 degrees nose up. So we come up here. SB still increasing. Drop it down to about 10 degrees to allow the speed to increase. That was spot on, my experience. That was absolutely spot on. It's amazing how quickly everything moves with this aircraft. Like, it really, really, everything moves quickly with this aircraft. It is one of those things where one of those aircraft where you don't expect it to you don't necessarily expect it to go as fast as it does but it really does move when it wants to all right passing through three and a half thousand feet on our way to six so what we're going to do is we're going to uh do a basic sort of couple of things with our autopilot here to show a couple of those functions here i'm just going to quickly hide the stick so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go flight director ap heading heading hold on and then we're going to go vertical speed. I'm going to set that up to 500 feet per minute climb rate. And it's actually, you know what, let's adjust that to vertical speed, 1,000 feet per minute. I wind the power back to about 80%. So small the amount of, uh, like, the, the, the amount of the amount of the pitch ladder it needs for to be able to go a thousand feet is really so small. It really is. Uh, but that's how easy the, the autopilot is to set up, uh, and it's just simply press button here to synchronise the heading with where you are. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll quickly wind that back to two seven zero. There we go. Gently bring us back there, and we'll come up to six thousand. We'll level off at six thousand feet. So that takeoff was pretty much. 
exactly what I experienced, and that is spot on. So for me, like straight away, I've already you know saying that you know this, this is this is this is right. Okay, so landing gear uh, up when positive ray up above uh, 120 knots. Okay, we check those subjects. All right. Uh, now this is our climb period of checklists. Uh, so essentially, just it just it gets you part of your workflow while you're in the cockpit. You know, check your fuel uh, through the fuel page here. You can see your fuel and what it is. If you've got any external tanks, gives you your estimated uh, time uh, and how much fuel internal remaining. It also your fuel flow as well. Uh, it also allows you to check your balancing of your fuel if necessary. So the aircraft will attempt to keep the fuel balanced, but if you do detect a you know, leak or you need to uh, imbalance it, you can override it using the manual pump systems over on that side. Uh, and again, as I said, that's just part of your normal uh, period of checks. Uh, the team at RS uh, Simulations include a number of other different sort of checklists as well, including the pre-maneuver pre or hazel check. Essentially, this is just to make sure your aircraft is safe before you do any aerobatics. So, uh, which, you know, I think we might actually do some of those uh, just to show this off. So what we'll do is, uh, as we'll, we'll, we'll set up some, uh, set up for some aerobatics, aerobatics before we do it while we, and we'll sort of a couple of position changes while we get ready for that. So uh, first off, let's set our altitude up to 8,000. So we'll go altitude button there. We'll make that up to 8,000. So we've got plenty of altitude because we need to make sure that we've got sufficient height for recovery. All right, and then we're going to set our vertical speed there. Vertical speed. Okay, oh, we need to set vertical speed mode. On the autopilot, well, that would probably help. All right, 1,000 feet per minute climb rate. And we're going to change our heading. We'll change that to due north, I think. So let's uh, turn the aircraft through here. There we go. Now just get out to some uh, safe areas to do some aerobatics. All right, so, uh, but yeah, so you go through and you've got that checklist. All right, so while we're doing that maneuver, let's jump on the outside and have a look at the exterior of the aircraft uh, before we get started with some aerobatics. So, the, I mean, we had a good detailed look at the aircraft while we we're on the ground, but in the air, the PC-21 just absolutely looks at home. Like, she looks fast standing still. And for somebody who has flown in the PC-21, she is a very fast aeroplane. She will happily do 300 plus knots, no dramas at all. At all. She won't even bat an eyelid. Uh, as we sort of, you know, looking at it for, from the underneath here, as you can see while we're in flight, we can see the detail that's gone through with the belly panels uh, and the landing gear have all been exquisitely modeled along with the rest of the airframe and uh, we see those differences with the smoke generators here with the fact that you know, although the front of them do, do look like your normal fuel tanks uh, they do of course have the rear sort of burner system there to be able to emit the smoke so uh, yeah they are custom models they're not just you know reused tanks they you know, they actually you know, the team actually modeled them correctly and again just goes to show the level of detail that the team at iris simulations really put in to making this aircraft actually look the part while it is uh, you know while it is in our sim and I, I just, I can't fault it. I absolutely cannot fault the model in any way, shape, or form. Now, while we're on the outside here, before we do our, uh, our uh, maneuvers here, let's uh, have a look at something that is always a good thing to look at. Let's have a look at the lighting system of the aircraft at night. So the night, so the night lighting of the aircraft is pretty much spot on. And from uh, having worked with pc 21s for a while, I can tell that the formation slime lights are insanely bright and can be seen from a very long way away. Uh, but otherwise, there's not like a, a lot of external lighting, yeah, unlike like you might expect to say on an airliner, for example, like there really is just the, the navs, the, the wingtip mounted uh, landing lights uh, and your formation lights, like that's it. There's no sort of, you know, logo illumination or anything like that. So again, but the, what the lighting is, they've got absolutely right. But let's have a look at the cockpit because that's also kind of important for night lighting. So in the cockpit here, you can see that uh, that you have both a sort of like a, a generic sort of floodlight that you can turn on and off. So I'm going to sort of lower that one down here. Uh, incidentally, if you turn it all the way off, though, it does trigger the um, excuse me, it does trigger the, uh, the, the 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 pilot's torch. Uh, so we'll leave it on very very low. But all the panel lighting, the back light, back 
illumination of the panel is all done correctly. Uh, your formation slime lights are controlled from over here on a rotary over here. Now, something else to... I was talking before about the HUD. So one of the drawbacks of using the, the style of coding that the team did for the PC-21 native HUD is that you do get sort of like this this coloured block uh, outside the HMD and it, it's over, outside the, the HUD uh, and it does sort of tend to sort of go over the glass. So uh, as I said, the team at Iris Simulations are working to evolve that technology into more in line with what the team at Asobo have done with their HUD for their F-18 uh, with uh, PC-21 specifics, but it's not quite there yet. In the meantime, if you do use PC-21 PC HUD, it looks fine, except at night is probably the only thing. But honestly, I'm not going to be doing a lot, a lot of night flying with this. It's mostly going to be daytime. But let's uh, jump back to the day uh, and let's do some uh, aerobatics and check out the smoke system. All right, so now that we're in a bit of uh, clear uh, area, so let's go through a couple of maneuvers. The first one I'm going to do, we're going to do a steep turn, uh, which is an important uh, thing for any student pilot. So I'm going to back the PCL back off to about 70% here. I'm going to trim that out. Now we're going to uh, come around here, back down to about 120. Let's try and see how we do here. Pull it through. Now, one of the interesting things about this aircraft is that she does have a tendency to jump around a little bit. The real aircraft is just like that as well, but she handles a steep turn just like the real aeroplane does pretty damn well. A little bit of rudder, and you have to be conscious of the aircraft when she's manoeuvring, uh, but absolutely does handle as I remember her handling. Uh, she has a tendency to wander a little bit, and that's just got to put a little bit of extra rudder in there but I can hold a really steep angle of bank. Uh, and I did lose about 200 feet there, so we'll bring that back up. And that's more on the pilot, I think, than the aircraft, and then I can roll it out pretty much bang on course. So she handles the maneuvers really, really well. Something that's interesting uh, as well, and something that's I don't think covered enough in other aircraft that I really noticed in this one is that uh, some people sort of say, oh, the you know aircraft for flying is supposed to be smooth. Look, it absolutely is. But what you don't realize until you're in the pilot's seat in real airplanes is the fact that you are, particularly with a digital, um, uh, a digital vertical speed indicator, is how much you jump around even in what is seemingly clear air. So having that sort of jumping up and down of the uh, HS, of, of the VSI there is absolutely spot on from my experience. So for me, that is exactly what I've experienced. So 100%. So yeah, great marks on that one because I don't see that a lot uh, with other aircraft either default or add-on. All right, now the other thing we're going to do is we're going to set up for a bit of a smoke run with the smoke system. So, uh, as I said, we saw where you've got our smoke generators fitted. Uh, so that's a good part. Now, in order for you to use smoke generators, there's a two-step process. So the first step is you need to arm the smoke generators, which is down here. You use the arm. Uh, if I use it, there we go. There's the arm button there. So where the smoke system is now armed. Now, to actually engage the smoke system, there's no button in the cockpit that will do that you do have to bind and normally that is on the uh, uh on the throttle sorry on the on the stick um however uh to uh do that to replicate that in the sim you have to bind it to a keyboard command you have to buy a, a, a sim command which is the toggle logo lights command so i've had that toggled to a button on my uh throttle so what we're going to do is we're going to jump to a bit of an external view and we're going to give this a go and see how i can do with a uh, flying without instruments uh, to do a maneuver so what we're going to do is we're going to push my speed forward here we we'll get a bit of uh, throttle up here about 85%. Going into it, I want about, th I want, I'm just going to push that throttle forward a bit further. I want about 300 knots on an entry. Okay, we're going to jump to our external view. All right, and smoke on. Through the inverts, power down, power back on. And level off. And how, how did we look? How did we look on that one? Let's uh, let's jump back inside. 
So the smoke system is really quite effective uh, in the the PC twenty one the team modelled here and looks absolutely looks the part. It really really does. Uh, it has a nice fair bit of uh, persistence as well uh, while you've actually got it on. And I'll just uh, quickly disengage the smoke system there, so you'll, we should be able to see the rest of the trail coming out behind me shortly. There we go, we can see where the trail ends. And you know what, for not being able to see where I was going, because I was doing it from an exterior view, that's not bad. That's not bad. Hey, uh, you know, you know, but not, not perfect, but hey, um, you know, RAF virtual, if the, if, the ra if the roulettes, if the virtual roulettes are looking for a new pilot, you know, feel free to come knocking on my door. Yeah, no problems. That'd be kind of cool. And as I said, like, it's the, the persistence of the smoke is a, a really nice feature. And uh, as I said, like, a yeah, quick little plug, as I said, like, uh, for the, the uh, virtual roulettes, uh, they've done some amazing displays for the flight simulation community and uh, do put on some amazing displays. So, uh, yeah, and it's a nice how it fades, the smoke fades out just like in real life too. So the effect for that really really well done but as I said like a couple of things yeah, you just have to do, have to be aware of when you're arming and using that alright let's uh, disarm our smokes alright so what we're going to do now folks is we're going to uh, sort of break the video there I'm going to head back to sail we're going to execute a uh, missed approach uh, missed ILS approach uh, into eSail before uh, entering the pattern and coming in for a full stop landing and uh, rounding out the review so be back shortly Alright, so here we are coming in on the ILS on 2-2 at uh, eSail here. And this is something that I said, like, apart from just nostalgia, uh, this is something I wanted to show us you. So we've got the ILS uh, functions enabled here. So we've got the ILS uh, shown down there on the PFD. Uh, but also this is a good chance to show that the coding of the HUD also supports both not only your sort of uh, where your nose is pointing at the aircraft, which you can see through the right-hand side sort of waterline marker there, uh, in the in the the HUD, but you can also see the fact that you've got the actual proper velocity vector showing where the aircraft is actually going. So I'm keeping the the velocity vector because we we're actually obviously this is not the active. We've actually got a winds out of two seven, so it is actually blowing me a little bit. So I'm to in order to compensate for that. Uh, we've got the velocity vector there. My, my nose is pointing off to one side. So I'm slightly off of center there. So let's bring that back. Okay, landing flap. Power is the lift. There it is. There's the power back. Okay, little low. Little below the slope. I was really below the slope pretty much the whole that last couple of miles there from there. Alright. And alright, power on, power up, flaps up, gear up, pitch up, flaps up. So the ILS functions uh, do fully are fully functional in this, and you can fly an ILS approach. Uh, you can fly coupled ILS approaches if you so desire. Uh, for me, I'm a bit of more of a hands-on kind of guy, but it is available for you if you'd like to do so. Uh, okay, all right, okay. So now that we're out of that one, let's uh, break the video again. What we'll do is we're gonna uh, turn, and we're gonna uh, join the circuit here uh, at East Sail, come in for a uh, overhead break and landing uh, on the visual on the active of 2.7. So uh, see you in just a moment. All right, passing over the top of sail now, doing flying uh, upwind. towards the town. Alright, on the brake. Air brake out, air brake back in. Watch the speed. And my spacing. Bring that throttle down. Uh, coming a little bit wide. 
power down. Okay. And, oh no, pr almost spot on with my spacing. So my wingtip should be on the runway. Not quite, but there, okay. Take off, flaps one set. Oh, and gear out, 180 knots. Okay, and my turn. Watch the power as I'm coming around. I think I extended that a little too far, I think. Place my velocity vector on the about the 500 footers. Power back. Flaps landing. Check. Gear down three grains. Flare, 100 knots over the fence, flaring, little long on the float, and down. Now, for those who might be wondering, yes, we all know that turboprops, particularly PT6s, which is the aircraft power by, normally have uh, thrust reversers, but the PC21 does not have a thrust reverser. There is no beta available on the PC21. Uh, so you roll out and gently apply the brakes because you do not want to cook the brakes. So, airspeed dropping, there we go, that's fine, just touching the brakes. Yeah, I've got to admit, the, the brakes are pre, are really well modelled this time, so hats off to, to Iris for modelling the brakes on this one. Alright, and I can stop, probably, probably should have gone to the next taxiway, but yeah, that's fine, this is what fly simming is for. Alright, so now that we are clear of the runway, Let's uh, tuck the flaps back in. Okay, and quickly consult my checklist for the after landing part of the checklist. Okay, so after landing is flaps up, check, and probes off. Check, recognition lights off, and white anti-coals off. Check and check. All right, and then we'll go on to our shutdown procedure very shortly. Okay, all right, let's taxi back to the ramp, and then let's uh, finish our shutdown and give our final thoughts on the PC-21 from Iris Simulations. Which, oh, oh, this has been so much fun. Oh, this is just, this, yeah, lots of fun. Okay. All right, we've got our marshaller there. Yeah, the layout of this uh, default airport is uh, not great, but it'll do. Okay. Okay, right. right. All right, shut down. Okay, let's bring up a shutdown checklist. Parking brake is on. Okay, PCL is idle. Check. Parking brake is on, ejection seat makes safe. So we're gonna safe our ejection seat. Let's quickly uh, do the same thing for our instructor at the back there. There we go. All right, ejection seat done. Landing light is set to off. Check oxygen off, PCL off. So that's the little flat paddle at the front there. PCL shut down. Done. And MC HUD switch off. External lights off when propeller stops. So that while the propeller spins down, tick those options. Acknowledge the uh, master caution there. Letting the prop spin down in a appropriately long time that it takes to spin down. 
okay, well, there, let's uh, turn off our backseaters uh, oxygen as well, shall we, while we're waiting for that. Okay, backseaters oxygen, turn off. There we go. And let's acknowledge those while we're here. And back to the front. And prop should be almost stopped. Come on. Come on. You know what, for simulation purposes, that's near enough. Okay. Uh, any calls, navigation, lights set oh, to off. Canopy unlock and open. Canopy unlocked. And canopy open. There we go. Knowledge, CFS pin once canopy is open. We'll fit the CFS pin. Make that system safe. I still love the little floating animation that it does there. That's awesome. Awesome. And bats and gens all set to off. Okay, generator one and two off. Batteries are off. All right. There we go. And that is it. That is our PC21 flight complete. All right, let's jump outside and let's give our final thoughts on this amazing little aircraft. All right, so final thoughts on the Iris Simulations PC-21. Um, look, flat out, I'm grinning from ear to ear. Um, just <laughs> TLDR, it's awesome. Go buy it. Um, and, and and not just because, yeah, I've got sentimental memories related to the PC-20 on, but seriously, folks, the level of detail in the model is phenomenal. The systems are really well detailed in what they are able to bring us. Yes, it doesn't have a fully functioned FMS and there are a couple of functions missing from the uh, the left MFD, but they are all related to things that are not able to be publicized. Uh, so that's something that I fully understand why IRIS simulations didn't bring them because those things do not impact and do not affect those, you know, our, our experience as a simmer. Um, would it be nice to have them? Sure, absolutely. But a couple of but those things are, are not there for reasons that I, I understand. So this aircraft is an incredibly beautiful and incredibly well done rendition of the aircraft, both in terms of its visuals and in terms of its flight dynamics. This thing flies like the, the what you saw me fly today is a portion of exact replications of what I have flown personally. And I can tell you that they, this was my experience with it almost spot on and enough that there's a lot of memories being, being, uh, being flooded back here right now. So for somebody who's got sick time in this one, I, I can't recommend this one enough. I, re I really, really can't. Like you, you definitely are not going to find a better value and a better rendition of this aircraft for less than a number that has lots and lots of zeros after it. So in in that regard, it the, the, the team at Iris Simulations have absolutely well and truly delivered the goods and delivered it not to us, to, just to us on PC, but also to Xbox users as well. Now, a couple of caveats, a couple of small little things, but nothing that for me that really breaks my immersion and breaks my desire to, in, and yeah, my enjoyment of having this aircraft. As I said, like, I finished this video with an absolute stupid grin on my face because I have had so much fun. The insane roll rate of this aircraft, uh, which uh, unfortunately didn't actually, didn't actually show off in this uh, uh, in this video, but it is absolutely insane and also modeled really, really well. The behavior through the steep turns, through the uh, you know very limited aerobatics that we did because we just did uh, a, a loop, but you know the renditions of the smoke system, the fuel system, everything that the team has done here just tick every single box for me and I absolutely highly recommend it to you. I really, really do. So uh, that's pretty much, that, 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 that's it. I, I got nothing else to say. It's amazing. Go buy it. It's awesome. Yeah, that's it. So, uh, to round out the review, I want to say a huge thank you once again to uh, the team over at Iris Simulations for providing me with the review copy of this aircraft. Uh, and this aircraft is available either directly from Iris Simulations or Orbis Direct or your favourite flight sim retailer, or sorry, the in-sim marketplace, and available now. And with that, folks, that does now round out this review video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, as always, to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed these videos and want to see more. And of course, as always, you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter and on Twitch. Just search Novawing24.
All right, folks, thanks very much for watching. Take care, safe skies to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.